I could talk about just what Bobby was saying earlier with the booklets. Um, I kept mine in my bag. Uh, I know they don't have a, a set locker room. When they get older and they have a locker room, you keep it in your stall. It's much easier to keep track of. When they're at a younger age and, and you're in the car talking to them, um, uh, I don't, what, questions that I think are important aren't how was practice, but okay, what, what did you have problems with? and then challenge their thought process. And we'll talk about that a little bit in a second here. But more and more what I find is we concentrate on the end result way too much. What we have to focus on is the process. What can we do to get better? How do we do it? And where was your head at when you were doing this or this? And it's interesting that you'll find when you challenge a thought process on these kids, what they start doing is they have to think. They have to incorporate, OK, I did this out here, but why did I do it? And when they start asking the question of why, that's when they start actually making changes that help them become a better goalie. How they actually get themselves in front of a puck more often than not. Um, to move on without the slideshow, I don't really need it. I already know what I'm going to be talking about. Um, I have eight different things outlined in the presentation here today. And they're very simple. When we start off, I use the KISS theory. And let's just keep it simple. And if we want to add the extra S, stupid. Just keep it simple, stupid. All we want them to do is when they're starting, you have to make it fun for them. We have to make sure that they're comfortable. Okay? So are their pads correct, correctly fitted? Five minutes. Okay. All right. And uh, are their pads correctly fitted? Do they have a good basic stance? Is there stick on the ice? Are their hands relaxed and ready? All right, we don't want to get them into a situation where they're out on the ice doing six movements right when they started and then trying to make a save. Set them up right at the top of the crease, got pucks in front of them, allow them to track the puck and basically let it hit them. All right, have some success early. That's what's most important. I can tell you from experience, uh, I remember being a first year squirt and you know, we're getting out there and uh, we had one of those puck machines and they would basically shoot the pucks to the corners and all we would do is just stop the puck, stop the puck. I wasn't moving at all. All I was doing was bringing my stick to the puck, bring my stick to the puck. And it was incredibly fun as a kid. And guess what? If we make this fun, they will, ha they will enjoy it and they'll want to learn and they'll want to get better. Um, the thing that we sometimes can get, or myself as a coach, been doing it for a while, we sometimes want to complicate things by adding extra movements, or maybe it's myself getting bored with the drill, but we have to understand that repetitions are what's going to improve the goaltender overall. So um, by doing repetitions, what we don't want to do is just have them out there and basically stopping pucks. We want to have a simple focus. Like the drill I was just talking about, having them out at the top and just stopping pucks, what we'd be telling them is track the puck all the way to your stick, all the way to your blocker. Watch it. If it goes in the net, I want you to turn your head and see it go in the net. Okay, that's how you build your ability to track the puck. If you can go ahead and flip it to the next one, push the down arrow. So, so yeah, I actually did have it. Many ways to build a goalie. Uh, I use the KISS theory. Um, I, use it, I keep it fun by using positive reinforcement, okay? Uh, and that leads into goalies know when they make a mistake. The puck's in the net. So if you're a goalie parent out here and, and you're terrified because you're watching your kid and pucks go in the net and you're up in the stands going, oh my goodness, I feel so bad for him, don't worry about that. What you do is after the game, you, you challenge a thought process instead of focusing on the actual goal. So Billy Owen, or let's just say Billy, Sam, Samantha, who cares, it doesn't matter. When that player came down the sidewall, why did you go down? You know, ask them that question. And then maybe you'll learn something when they say, well, I saw them drop their shoulder. Okay, well then all of a sudden you can say, wow, okay, you were watching the shooter, that's good. But we don't want to commit until the shot actually comes. So that would be a way that we can make them better. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Okay, so. What I did is to keep it simple in line with what I was saying earlier is I made up eight keys here. Number one being footwork, okay? We want them to stop pucks and the only way they're gonna stop more pucks is to be able to move on their feet, all right? To get from point A to point B effectively, efficiently, and in a good goalie position. When they do that, they'll stop pucks, okay? So 
The next thing would be angles. All right, now angles, uh, to, to clarify, when a play comes out down the center and they start working off to the side, the goalie needs to know his relationship between him, the net, and the shooter, okay? And not the shooter, the body, but the actual stick. As they get older, we teach them to understand what the difference is between a right-handed shooter and a left-handed shooter. If you, everybody in the audience, if you look at me right now, if a goalie comes out and squares up to my body right here and the net is right behind him and my stick is way down over here, is he on his angle? He or she on his angle? No. Okay, so it's a big difference if I had a stick here or if I had a stick here. That's a significant change in the angle. So getting the goalie on the angle is going to put the body in a position for the puck to just hit him. Okay, depth control. I like to call it challenging the shooter. You can call it goalie gap control. You can use fancy words. But the bottom line is, if you're going to stand on the goal line, a lot of pucks are going to go in the net. So we have to make them comfortable getting outside of the paint, we call it, or outside of the blue, OK? Getting out, stopping, and actually working back with the player, allowing them to be an athlete. All right, allowing them to get beat every once in a while so that they can learn how to use the space to their advantage. Okay, just like a defenseman, how many out here have played defense before? Couple, okay. So when you talk about gap control to the neutral zone, you learn about getting up, then matching speed back to the neutral zone so that you can hopefully take them out in the neutral zone or meet them at the blue line depending if you have support or not. For goalies, we work on depth control as well, and we're going to get into that more when we have an actual slide on it. Uh, stance. Stance is very important. We're, we're going to go over just the basics on it. Uh, being square to the puck. Now, that's different than angles, okay? I could be, if you were the shooter and say that the puck was right in front of you, if I came up to you and I went like this, I'm, I'm on my angle, but I'm not square. We want to bring our whole body to the play. When we bring our whole body to the play, what happens is we have more stopping space available and we're more likely to let the puck just hit us. Um, stick control, uh, we're going to talk about how important the stick is, getting all the way up into high school, even in the college game. Um, the equipment, we're going to talk about how this affects the goalie. And then at the end, we're going to talk about watching hockey and how that helps us. So if we could go to the next one. So being a good skater. You always start from the feet up, like I said. The better the skater, the better they can move in the crease, the more pucks are going to stop. It's simple. This is never going to change. Okay? You have to commit yourself as a young goalie to get better on your skates. It's just like how skaters learn inside edge control, outside edge control. We're doing the same thing as a goalie. As a goalie, we play on our inside edges, okay, so that we can move laterally with the play. We hardly use our outside edge. The only time we're really using our outside edge is when a puck is wrapped in the net, and this is for older goalies, and we go on our outside edge, do a crossover step, and get behind the net. Okay? So learning that inside edge is very important. Now what I did is I brought my goalie skates in here just to kind of show you some other things here. As a young goalie, they're going to have a little bit more problems when they transition from mite to squirts. Okay? And the reason is forward skates are rockered. And goalie skates are long and flat for a reason. It gives us more stability. It gives us balance, OK? As we're moving, so say a rush comes in and we're moving backwards, now we're moving laterally, there's a lot of different movements going on there. And if we're not balanced, guess what happens? Boom, we're on our butt, OK? So in order to do that, we have to have a longer base so that we can get our weight underneath us and move in a manner that when I do have to pivot as I'm moving backwards and go laterally, I can stay in that goalie stance and let the puck hit me, okay? Um, so the other thing that I can tell you now is the way to go, the game has gotten more advanced. Uh, I don't